Metal Jesus, and I'm back again. And you know what? I have something to admit. I'm not really proud of it, but the truth is I took an awful long time to add a Nintendo Wii to my collection. And the reason for that is, is because I think like a lot of people, I had just assumed that the majority of the games on it were either shovelware or just crap. And yes, there are a lot of crappy shovelware games on the Wii, but if you dig deep enough, there are also a ton of hidden gems. And so that's gonna be the point of this series of videos. This is gonna be the first one to show you some of the games that I think are worth collecting and worth owning. Let's take a look. Lost in Shadow is a game I remember hearing about a long time ago, but for whatever reason, I forgot about it. And that's a real shame because it's definitely a hidden gem, especially for fans who like 2D platforming and puzzle games. The premise of this game is pretty interesting. You play as a shadow, and what I mean by that is, is that there's this boy at the top of this really high tower, and this guy comes out at the beginning of it, and he cuts away the shadow of the boy and grabs a hold of the shadow and tosses it over the edge. So for the rest of the game, you are controlling the shadow in the background of the levels. It's actually really interesting how it plays out and how you solve things and how you do your platforming. As a matter of fact, every time I play this game, I kind of have to readjust my thinking a bit because you're so used to looking at the foreground and in this game, that's not the case. In addition to the platforming, there are lots of switches and levers that open up paths by changing how shadows fall. Often you're dealing directly with sunlight and how that plays with shadows. There's also some light combat in this game, which admittedly isn't great, but man, the platforming and the puzzle solving is really fun. Also, special note needs to be given to the music in this game, which is mostly ambient, and really sets the tone for the whole thing. I mean, the music in this game just feels like, like wispy and airy, kind of like, like a shadow. Now I know what you're thinking, hasn't there already been a ton of Dead Space games? And yes, there have been. There's actually been three of them so far, but the Wii version here is really special and pretty interesting. This Wii version is actually an on-rail shooter and a prequel to the original game. For those of you that aren't familiar with Dead Space, essentially you are a space colonist that finds this really bizarre red marker. And once it's moved, for whatever reason, it starts making people kind of go a little nutty and a little psycho. This game is played out completely in the first person and it's on rails, meaning that you don't really control where it goes. Often when playing this game, I actually, it, it kind of felt like it was like a movie that I was part of. It was really well made, lots of dialogue, lots of story, lots of characters that you interact with. And of course, lots and lots of shooting and cutting apart the necromorphs, which are essentially the aliens that are taking over these colonists, or maybe the colonists are becoming the necromorphs, whatever it is. This has really, really solid uh, on-rail shooter mechanics, lots of different weapons and alt firing. Just a, a really, really cool and well-made game. It should also be noted that this game was eventually released on the PlayStation Network and Steam, although it doesn't have the bonus features that come on the Wii version. Muramasa the Demon Blade is an action RPG by Vanillaware. Now that may sound familiar, that's because that developer also made the PlayStation 2 hidden gem Odin Sphere. In this game you play as two characters, one a fugitive who has lost his memory, including that of a crime that he committed, and also of a princess possessed by a dark spirit. Now right off the bat I have to say, I mean, this game just has beautiful hand-drawn 2D art inspired by Japanese mythology. It's just gorgeous. But thankfully this art is backed up with really strong and satisfying gameplay. It's satisfying to kick ass with tight controls, use multiple combos, and take down really interesting enemies and bosses. Being an action game, it's really nice that this supports a bunch of different controller options. I use the normal Wii controls when capturing this footage, but it also has support for the classic controller 
and even the GameCube controller if you still have one. And then finally, if you happen to have a PlayStation Vita, this game is going to be coming to the handheld very soon in an HD remix. Here's one of the first games I got when I first picked up the Wii, and it's called Kororimpa. Hmm, not sure what that means, but I call it Marble Mania. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking, a marble game? Yes, this game is actually really, really fun. The whole premise of this game is to navigate a marble through a complex labyrinth, collecting items and unlocking the exit. Now you do this by holding the Wii remote horizontal and flat, as though it's the, the environment in front of you. And as you tilt your wrist, it tilts the environment and therefore makes the marble go forward or back, or you can even do crazy stuff. Like you'll get to parts where you have to really tilt it 90 degrees to get the marble to kind of fall off an edge. It's crazy. Now, I think the reason why I like this game so much is because it feels so natural with the Wii remote. It doesn't feel gimmicky, it doesn't feel cheap, you don't get too frustrated, and it just feels right at home on the Wii console. And the levels in this game, while, while they do get pretty tough later on in the game, as you would expect, it's always really interesting, the level design and the, the challenges that the game puts you through. If you are a fan of Super Monkey Ball or the arcade game Marble Madness, definitely give this a go, it's pretty fun. Red Steel 2 is a first-person brawler that's a sequel to a game that a lot of Wii owners bought, but ultimately criticized for its sloppy controls. Well, the sequel aims to fix all of that by supporting the updated Wii Motion Plus attachment. And I'm happy to report that for the most part, the sequel is infinitely better than the original. The game is played in first-person perspective, where you seamlessly alternate between shooting your guns and sword fighting, while battling up to six enemies, or sometimes even more. The controls are really tight in this game. I mean, you will be shooting at a guy, you'll be blocking bullets, then somebody will come up close to you, and then all of a sudden you're like in hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're doing combos, you're doing finishing moves. It's really satisfying. I also like the mix of cartoony and cel-shaded graphics. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Borderlands. But also the gameplay, for whatever reason, reminds me of the Metroid Prime games that came out on the GameCube. It just has that kind of feel. This is a really fun game. I was pleasantly surprised. MX versus ATV Untamed. All right, I just really like doing that voice. I apologize. So I know a lot of you racing fans out there are going, really, an ATV MX game, these come out probably like five times a year, you know, they're they're on every system. Well, I wanted to include a racing game in this video and actually the Wii version is surprisingly good. I mean, who knew? Now, for those of you that don't know, this series is all about off-road racing. This game encompasses all sorts of different styles of racing. There's off-road, there's indoor supercross, there's even mini bikes in this game. There's a ton of different vehicles too. Monster trucks, trophy trucks, ATVs, motorcycles, it just goes on and on. But the reason why I want to mention it here is that if you happen to have a Wii, this is actually a really good game. The controls are tight with the Wii remote and nunchuck, which is what I use to capture this footage. But it also supports the classic controller as well. And like any good racing game, the soundtrack just kicks ass. There's bands like Bad Religion, Disturbed, No Effects, Pennywise, and a ton more. Ghost Squad on the Wii is going to sound familiar to a lot of fans of my channel, and that's because I talk this game up every chance I get. If you are a fan of arcade light gun shooters like Time Crisis or House of the Dead, you owe it to yourself to pick up this game. This game started in arcades, but then was ported to the Wii by Sega. It's goofy and has over-the-top humor and terrible, I mean, oh, it, it's so bad, it's good voice acting, it's just... Oh, it's, you know what, you know what, that's part of the charm of a lot of these light gun games. There's just the really bad voice acting, and that's definitely here. The terrorists have taken over the plane. Their motives are uncertain. But what we do know is that the president is their target. This game has branching paths to make you want to play through the story again, as well as character upgrades to customize your playthrough. Now the story is somewhat generic, but you know what? It's it's kind of a takeoff of the 80s sort of action movie thing. I mean, there's 
there's the president and he's being kidnapped or something. I don't know, who cares, who cares? What's really important here is that the gameplay and the shooting on the Wii is solid. This game is fun from beginning to end. I love it. So that's a quick look at some hidden gems on the Wii. As you can tell, I'm having a lot of fun collecting for it. And you know what? I've got another stack here that I'm gonna be going into in other videos, so stay tuned. And if there's games that you think need to be in this list, please post below. I'd love to hear about it because I'm not done collecting. Now's a great time to do it. Some of these games I bought really, really cheap. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel and thanks for subscribing. Take care.